As the clock ticks down to the start of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season, forecasters are coming up with predictions on how active it will be. But I'm going above and beyond just the numbers. In this video, I'm going to show you not just how many tropical storms and hurricanes we're likely to see this hurricane season, but more importantly, how many of them will hit the Caribbean and the US and what makes this season unique and very important to watch. A key ingredient for hurricane activity is sea surface temperatures. This time last year, the Atlantic Ocean was on fire with record high sea surface temperatures, which fueled several rapidly intensifying hurricanes out there that left a trail of death and destruction. But this year is completely different. The Atlantic has cooled down quite a bit, especially over here in the main development region, where sea surface temperatures are currently near to slightly below average. Things are cooler than they have been in several years across this region. If this pattern stays in place, that's a good thing. But don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that we can't see intense hurricanes this year. Just look at this. Notice how the Gulf, the Caribbean, and really the entire Western Atlantic are running significantly warmer than average. So now the warmth is closer to home. That can cause two problems. These warm waters in this region can not only increase the possibility of new storms forming, but will also allow existing systems to rapidly intensify in the Caribbean as they approach the US. But even though warm sea surface temperatures or fuel for hurricanes, that doesn't matter if a tropical system can't even organize. There's one big thing that stops and destroys tropical systems, and that is wind shear. This ties into a phenomenon called the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, which basically refers to the fluctuation of the water temperatures across the tropical Pacific. During an El Nino, water temperatures in the tropical Pacific are warmer than average, fueling thunderstorms in the eastern Pacific. This tends to create a bunch of wind shear over the Atlantic, especially over the Caribbean and the Gulf, which reduces reduces Atlantic hurricane activity, and most of the storms that do form will often recurve harmlessly out into the open Atlantic without causing impacts. In contrast, when water temperatures in the Pacific are cooler than average, referred to as a La Nina, the wind shear over the Caribbean goes away, making it much easier for hurricanes to form and intensify, and more of them end up hitting the Caribbean and the US. But guess what? This hurricane season won't have either of these. We're actually in Enzo neutral. After a short-lived weak La Nina, this past winter, sea surface temperatures have quickly warmed up and are now hovering right around average. There is still some uncertainty on whether this will unexpectedly change, which if it does, could throw a major wrench into any hurricane forecast. But as of right now, most of the forecast models keep Enzo neutral in place throughout most, if not all, of the 2025 hurricane season. This means the Enzo won't really have much of an impact one way or the other on hurricane activity this year, and that can lead to a lot of variability, making predictions on the season's activity more tricky. But if we combine Enzo neutral with warmer sea surface temperatures in the Caribbean and the Western Atlantic, we may be looking at a somewhat above average hurricane season with more tropical storms forming closer to land, making this hurricane season more concerning. If we look at analogs or previous years with similar ocean temperature patterns, these can give us a better idea of what to expect this season, not just in terms of how many named storms, but also just how the season looks in general. According to Tropical Tidbits, the top analogs for the 2025 hurricane season are apparently 2011, 1975, and 1999. 2011 featured an above average number of tropical storms. Many of them were what we would call fish storms. They didn't cause too much damage to land for the most part until Hurricane Irene wrecked havoc across the Caribbean and the east coast of the US. 1975 was a near average hurricane season with a couple of Caribbean and US impacts. And 1999 was a pretty active and impactful hurricane season with several impacts to the Caribbean and the U.S. East Coast, which got hammered by several hurricanes, including Hurricane Floyd. Could 2025 share some similarities with these years? Definitely possible. But of course, there are a lot of other factors that influence hurricane activity that we can't predict just based off of ocean temperatures. That's where forecast models come in. Currently, the forecast models are kind of all over the place. Some suggest that we'll see a slightly above average level of tropical activity, especially from the main development region, and some of this could hit the northeastern Caribbean before recurving towards either the Bahamas, the east coast of the U.S., Bermuda, or out into the Atlantic. While other modeling suggests that we could see a ton of activity blasting through the Caribbean right into Central America and the Gulf Coast, others are not convinced, keeping much of the Caribbean relatively dry for the most part until October. Then the Gulf appears to heat up, and things may look more serious for the Gulf Coast, Central America, and the southeastern U.S. 
A lot can change over the next couple of months, but overall the forecast models suggest a very mixed up and interesting hurricane season with a lot of potential variability and opportunities for widespread impacts. So to figure out what to expect this hurricane season, you need an expert. Somebody who's analyzed all the available information to get a better idea of what's most likely to happen. That expert is me, and here's my official preseason forecast for the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. In terms of how many tropical storms and hurricanes we'll see, I'm predicting a total of 13 to 19 named storms, somewhere around 16 if I had to pick a number. That's above the average of 14, but lower than last year's total of 18 named storms. Out of these storms, I predict that somewhere between 5 and 10 will strengthen into hurricanes, with a likely value of around 8 or so, just barely above the average of 7, but significantly lower than last year's total of 11 hurricanes. When it comes to major hurricanes, those classified as Category 3 or higher, I expect to see between 2 and 5, with an estimate of around 3. That's in line with the average, and is a couple less than last year's total. Overall, I'm forecasting an above-average 2025 Atlantic hurricane season, at least in terms of activity. But how many of these storms will impact the Caribbean and the U.S.? Of course, it's pretty much impossible to predict an exact number, but I believe that we will see significant variability in storm tracks this season. I'm leaning more into the very accurate analogs and other data that suggest a near-average Bermuda high-pressure system over the Atlantic, which could allow storms from the main development region to track along or just north of the northeastern Caribbean before recurving and escaping out to sea, potentially resulting in some fish storms. However, a few storms will also have the opportunity to form in or move into the Caribbean and the Gulf. And if anything forms in or enters this region, it could intensify quite quickly and will be very likely to cause impacts for someone. Additionally, we should definitely keep an eye on the potential for several tropical systems to hit the East Coast as they swing around the Bermuda High. From my analysis, I'm predicting that the areas most likely to get hit or affected by a tropical storm or hurricane at some point during this hurricane season are the Lesser Antilles, the Northeastern Caribbean, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas, Central America, the East Coast of Mexico, um, the Yucatan Peninsula, the Mid-Atlantic Coast, especially the Carolinas, and also potentially Florida and possibly portions of the Gulf Coast. And the potential variability in the storm tracks makes it important to watch how things may evolve over the next few months. As we enter the 2025 hurricane season, it's crucial to prepare regardless of the forecasted number of storms because remember, it only takes one hurricane or even a tropical storm to cause significant impacts to lives and property. Make Make sure you have an evacuation plan in place, stock up on essential supplies, and stay informed about local weather updates. If you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button if you haven't already, share the video, and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for updated information on the tropics during the hurricane season. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.